Hey, how's it going? I'm trying to not put too much pressure on myself to even think about, you know, if this video ever goes up on social media. More of a video diary at this point. So welcome to my little wilderness. got mowed once this season and probably won't get mowed again until next if even then and that's okay in a way I kind of like it all grown up like this because I'm hidden more or less the only one really that knows that I'm out here is me my daughter Look how tall this stuff is. Taller than me. Anyway, I don't even know what half of this stuff is that's growing out here. I've planted, um, there's alfalfa that I put out here, red clover and white clover, and some horse pasture mix. But as you can see, out the field getting mowed regularly it's um you can't tell it but like i said it's probably for the best for now so um and come that back here this is my this is my sitting corner, right there. I just sit out here. This is my prayer field, more or less. I come out here when I know I wanna be, when I wanna be completely alone. And if I wanna talk to myself, I do. If I wanna talk to God, I do. And in tonight's case, I'm gonna talk to my camera. I'm not sure what about but all I really know is that God's been dealing with me on several things and the main one I think for now is that he's teaching me excuse me, to uh, not to love the world or anything in the world because some of the things that I really enjoy doing in the past, like my art and uh, junk journaling, uh, taking care of the chickens and stuff like that, I don't really enjoy the way I used to and as someone who has dealt with depression, it's not depression either. Uh, there's really no sadness involved in whatever it is I'm feeling. It's just, you know, I, I want to, I, I tell myself that I want to do um, art or whatever. And then when it comes time to actually do it, it's like, eh, I don't, well, what's the point? Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I think, I think he's showing me that. Uh, I'm learning that distinction of how I feel when I'm following him and obeying his nudges and his voice versus my own inclinations and things that I want to do, I can definitely see the difference. And it's definitely been a process and ever since um, what happened back in June when whatever it was came out of me when I screamed it out that night back in June. And it's, it's, 
It's definitely been a very interesting take, I guess. Not take. Um, I don't want to say journey because that word is overused now. Tell me I'm lying. Uh, but it's definitely the last, what's this month? September. Yeah, the last three months have been very interesting for me. And uh, there's been, it's spiritually speaking, it's been like two steps forward, one step back. And that's to be expected, right? As we all learn and try and break free of old habits. I told my mom today I'm going to switch gears on you a little bit well let me back up first before I switch gears so, um, my mom was in the hospital for a couple days and today she was released and I went to go pick her up and take her home and I hung out with her at her house for a little bit and, you know, did a little bit of cleaning up and took her trash out and then just hung out with her. And I told her about some of the questions I've been having with, um, and been asking God here lately on number one, how can we know how intimate can we be with God without it being self-deception or Satan deceiving us and she said that was a question that most Christians have to grapple with and it's been like an age-old question so that was a relief to hear her say that and another one was the are we created sinful and born into sinful bodies or are we um, created pure and then born into sin and that's basically an age old question too and and I, I agree with her she said that that was one of those questions that she had had that she just couldn't think about because it got to be overwhelming and you basically when you're asking yourself that question, it basically makes you hop on a hamster wheel and you end up muddying the waters and confusing yourself. And yeah, so I was like, yeah, I, I completely see that because that was one of those questions where basically I prayed about it and said, Lord, I can't handle this question because I will confuse myself to no end. And what good is that? Uh, let's see. Um, for anybody who is even watching any of these, if I even post them, I, uh, since that night in June, or since I started fasting, which was the beginning of June, excuse me, the beginning of June, I lost 20 pounds. Uh, and the only reason I really, I, I, I have an audio entry. I, I do an audio diary too. And um, basically I felt like the Lord was telling me to not weigh for three months. So June, July, August. So the end of August was a weigh in. And it was a little early. It was August 24th because that was when my doctor appointment was for my annual physical. So, you know, might as well. And I still haven't looked in a full length mirror since mid-April uh, so I mean let me take that back that's a little bit of a lie I went to the gym with my sister not too long ago and got a glimpse of myself but I didn't like stare and like, like try and get a, a, a full view of what I saw was different so but yeah I definitely feel better as far as that goes but still Still a ways to go. And that was another thing I told my mom. I said I wasn't sure if it was possible possible to be completely healed of this while I'm in this body. 
So with all that being said, let me switch gears on you. And I told her with what I think is going to be coming next in this country and worldwide that I might not make it to 50 years old and I'm almost 44. End of the year, I'll be 44. But I also added that I won't be on this earth any more or any less than God wants me to be. I will go in his time, you know, so I'm not really worried about it, but I don't know. I don't know how I get these thoughts, but some would call me crazy, you know, maybe. Do I, but do I come off as a, you know, crazy person to you? I mean, in many ways, I understand exactly how the world views me. Here I am by myself on the northwest corner of my property, speaking into a camera on self-deliverance in the Lord and <laughs> um, questions of intimacy with Christ. And what's most of the world doing? Most people my age, you know, well, my age, some are probably watching TV. Some might be drinking. Some might be smoking weed. Some, I don't know. I don't know what people my age do because I'm not out there doing that. And that's not what I want to do. Uh, the, the commercials, like I went to Tennessee back in July 4th weekend to Temple Baptist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee. I went up there just to hear that man preach. And huh, that was the first time in maybe, maybe a month that I had access to TV like normal quote unquote normal TV, not just streaming YouTube, which is what I do for entertainment. But I've been trying to wean myself off of that. But I basically got a really, um, almost got an outside looking in type view of me from the world's perspective. And <laughs> I am one weirdo, <laughs> so, yeah, and, but that, I mean, I'm not, I ain't worried about it, but I don't drink, I don't smoke, I used to, but God told me to stop, and he kept, you know, and I can't say, like, he told me, when I say God told me, I think deer just running away. Yep. Bye. <laughs> when I say God told me, you know how a lot of people will say, well, the Lord laid it on my heart or the, I feel like the Lord is leading me to do this or say that. I just shorten it and say God told me. So God told me to stop smoking weed. And I stopped back in February of this year. So... And it's like, okay, I got to give, present our bodies a living sacrifice. And I think maybe that's part of why it's been hard for me because I'm learning what that means. And, and I'm thinking that, that might be what it means when I'm thinking I might not be alive for another ten, 10 years. I might be dead. Because the agenda of the enemy is basically out in the open. It's plain as day for anyone who cares to look. Um,
and I'm trying to not think about it too much. It's like it's not really my problem at this point. My my main focus and concern should be serving my Lord and doing what he tells me to do and obeying him. Because if you can't keep up with the footman, how will you keep up with the cavalry, the horsemen? If you can't obey him in little things, how will you obey him in big things? So when a lot of these people out here say that that they um, won't comply, no mask, no jab, I, I understand. But what's that phrase? Everyone's a Christian until things get biblical. I can only hope and pray that I won't betray my Father in heaven. And a lot of, you know, and I, I know I'm kind of rambling. And so if you like bad, bad audio or <laughs> bad visuals and bad audio and possibly ramblings of, an, of a mad woman, then please join in. But um, like when a lot of people say, if you will, it's in the Bible. And it can, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, thou shalt be saved. Yeah. But that means basically, hey, deny your father. Pretend someone's got a gun to your head and say, yes, Jesus is Lord. Are you still going to say Jesus is Lord? By and by saying so means you die. Is that how much he means to you? I ask myself this too. And I know the potential is there to, to betray him. And I don't want to do that. I would rather die than betray him. And I was like, Lord, if I... If my last words on planet Earth is, yes, Jesus is Lord, I'm, you know, I'm peeing my pants with a gun to my head. And if I yell out, yes, Jesus is Lord, I'm scared to death, but yes, Jesus is Lord, pow, so be it. It might happen. The whole, <sighs> I'm going to switch gears on you again. Oh my goodness, there's a spider. Oh God, <laughs> go on little Phil. No, 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 no. <laughs> go, go, go somewhere else. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord I don't know if you can see that sucker look at him he needs to go and find somewhere else to go or I'm going to have to go find me another spot <laughs> okay I'll just come out here <laughs> He's one of those big suckers, too. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, where was I? What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. Okay, so y'all, here's a little quick piece of advice. Today is 
September 9th, 2023. And as you, if if you watch any of my videos, you can go back to the video entitled Time to Prepare for What's Next, which was published April 30th, I think. Anyway. Good Lord, there's another spider. Anyway, so there, um, kind of like an addendum to that video. I want to give a little piece of advice. Anybody paying attention, it's time to pay more attention. Well, first of all, I will always point you to Christ first, okay? Let's not trust in our own minds and our own flesh to solve anything that we're about to go through. Because our plans can and they do backfire all the time. The same is true for the enemies. <clears throat> but... It's time to pay a little bit more attention, keep your ear to the ground, stay prayed up, stay repented and repentant. Be willing to confess everything to him at all times because that's the only way you can really keep your relationship with him honest on your end. He will he's always faithful. We are not. Ask me how I know. Okay, so anyway, um, pay attention to the media and what they're going to start spinning, especially as uh, the election season heats up. Because, and I could be wrong, but I think they're going to try and spin what happens next into a... Uh, they're going to try and tackle it from the climate change angle, okay? Okay. Because if you watched my other video, you know I think it's going to be a nuclear attack on a city, or it might it could also be an EMP. I don't know. Um, some people think that uh, it's going to be um, like a like the grid is going to go down, like the no power, like it, our power system is going to be hacked and going to be down. I don't know. I don't know, but. They keep talking. I mean, they've been doing this climate change angle for a minute now. Y'all know this. So, let's just be honest, okay? The only way that the climate crisis, the quote-unquote climate crisis, climate change crisis, could be helped in any meaningful measure over the next five to ten years is if there is less people okay i'm sorry it's true and the enemy and the elites they know this already okay i don't want i don't want millions hundreds of millions and billions of people to die i don't i don't want to die yet but like i said i'm not going to be here any longer or any less than what the lord christ wants me to be here my life is in his hands, ultimately, as is yours. But I think this is part of it. They need, they can't, they can't subjugate, what, how many, how many billions of people on planet Earth now? Seven or eight billion people? How many is here in the United States pushing 400 million? There's no way. They have to get rid of some of us. And if that's through grid down scenario, they say, um, I'm gonna mention um, Dave Hodges of uh, the Common Sense Show in this one. He, like in a grid down scenario, 90% of the population is dead in a year or two, something like that. So, and most that that means most of your elderly and people that have severe medical needs are gone like first off our most vulnerable are automatically gone the young and the old and then the rest of us are left to fight amongst ourselves and 
like I said, I think, I think we will be invaded. I still believe that, but the timing of it, I don't know. Like I said, I want to be wrong on all of it. Um, but yeah, I say that's part of it. If the climate change thing keeps coming up in the news, just watch out, okay? Anytime I see an article in Apple News, I, ta I basically save that article for, you know, anything that has to do with Russia or Ukraine, I save. Anything that has to do with climate change thing, I save. Anything that could lead us into World War III, yep. And that's another thing. I think a good chunk of World War III is going to be fought on the American soil. And that by, might be another wave, how they get 90% of us gone. Or the last 10%. And then they subjugate and enslave the rest, possibly take them to China or Russia. And I don't know. There's so many things we don't know, but I still believe that while all this is going to happen and go on, Christ will work in his people. He always leaves a remnant. And if this doesn't turn into being like the tribulation or the last days, he'll, he'll leave a remnant. He always does. Go back and look at the Old Testament. Anytime Israel was invaded, there's always a remnant. I wish I could pause this thing because I can't think of anything to say at the moment. I'll just edit it out. I still don't believe we're gonna have a 2024 election. The quote unquote election of 2020 was the last one this country ever had. So we made it what? I can't do that sort of math in my head, but we didn't even make it 300 years. Oh, excuse me, I gotta stretch. Y'all, if if you don't know without a doubt that you have been chosen, touched by the Lord, saved, however you want to put it, it's time to find out soon. Call out to Him and ask. And I know that I have so many questions for him. But I know that it's for my own good that I don't know that he doesn't tell me. I've always been curious and inquisitive. It's how he made me. So, I, um, 
basically I, I guess in a way I've also been learning how to put things on the back burner as far as my questions all I know to do is just keep doing what I've been doing take care of house and homestead and keep trying to put food away I've done quite a bit of that I'm about to start a uh, fall garden too got the seedling started last week but yeah I'm you know I thought maybe for a bit that there would be civil war here I don't know if that's going to happen or not maybe pockets of it But how can you fight a civil war when there's no leadership on the other side, basically? I mean, that's the sad truth of it. There's leadership on the government side. Where's the leadership on the people's side? Name one. I'll wait. Well, I'm going to let this one stew for a day or two and pray about it and seek him on it if he wants me to put it up on YouTube. If he does, I will. And I'll edit out some of the crazy parts. <laughs> uh, I'll keep the spider in, though. I have to make sure I don't walk through his web going home. But yeah, it's getting pretty dark. It's lovely though, isn't it? You the tree frog? And the crickets. That's why I come out here. God's creation, just like me and you. Well, I'm going to hang this up and go back to the house and Might journal for a little bit, might write. And I'll read the words some too, but either way, I'm gonna hang this up. So God bless you all. Good night.